So in this example, what we have is a uh, series of ropes, and they are supporting a uh, mass, the bag of cement. And the problem tells us uh, a couple of things in here. We have the known weights. Um, so we know that the weight over here is equal to 325 newtons. And that's its way of telling us what the total mg is. We don't know the mass of the bag. We know what the weight is total. And we know that the angle measures are 25 degrees and 10 degrees right here. Tensions in the ropes. Well, if you count, there's three ropes. And I'm just going to label them from left to right and kind of clockwise. T1, T2, and T3. T3 is actually inconsequential. We don't even have to find T3. T3 is pulling straight up onto the weight. And so if we have the weight acting down, which is 325 newtons, T3 must be pulling straight up with that exact same force. So T3 is easy. That's 325 newtons. So what we really care about are what T1 and T2 are. To find those out, we, of course, are going to be doing our sums of the forces. And in order to do our sums of the forces, we'll do the little breakdown right here. And we're going to start off with the forces in the, having a hard time drawing a sigma here, x direction. So some of the forces in the x direction. I'm going to start with x. Um, obviously, we're not accelerating. I'm going to start over here with T2 because T2 is pulling up and to the right, and T1 is pulling up and to the left. So in the x direction, T2 is our positive force, but not all of T2 is pulling that way. We have T2. I care about this particular uh, component of T2. That's adjacent to 10, so adjacent is the cosine of 10 degrees. T1 is pulling backwards, and it's pulling on this component backwards, so minus T1 cosine 25, because again, it's pulling to the left. It's the adjacent angle. They're pulling against each other. Those are the only two forces in the x direction, and those are going to equal zero. I can do the same thing now, and I can sum up my forces in the y direction. And in the y direction, I, of course, compare, and I care about this component of both T1 and T2. They're both pulling up, so I can start with T1. T1 sine 25. plus T2 sine of 10 minus the weight that's pulling down, which we know is 325 newtons. And it's, of course, not accelerating or doing anything, moving at a constant speed. So that equals 0. At this point, we have two equations, 1 and 2. We have two unknowns. We don't know T1 or T2 in either of these. So what we have here is a simultaneous equation solve. So the way these will always work, you'll use one equation to solve for one of these variables, and you will plug that into the other one. The easiest one for me to utilize at this point is the T1 equation. Uh, I'm sorry, the fx equation, the sum of the forces in the x. And so I'm going to bring this down here, and I'm going to solve for T1. So I'm going to add the T1 cosine 25 term to the other side. And so I'm going to get T2 left by itself. Give me a second here. T2 left by itself cosine 10 equals, I've just now added the T1 term over to the other side. Now, at this point, I could solve for T1 or T2. I'm just going to solve for T1 just because that's what I did before. And so to solve for T1, I divide both sides by the cosine of 25. And the cosine of 25 will be over here now that I've divided by it. And so there's our T1. So we have our formula now for the T1. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug that into here just like that. So I'm going to drop the sum of the forces in the y down, and I am going to replace that. So instead of writing T1, I'm now going to write T2 cosine 10 
all over cosine 25. I can't forget about my sine 25 there, so that's still times sine 25, so I'm going to write that on top. Sine, oops, that's terrible. Sine, I have a little spot here where apparently I'm not allowed to write. Hmm. Bear with me here. There we go. Whatever. Imagine that's a sign. 25. Extend this. Plus, I have this whole term and the 325. So T2 sine 10 minus 325 equals 0. Now I have this equation, and all I don't know is T2. So what I can do is I can factor out a T2. So if I factor out a T2, I'm factoring out my T2 right now. This all becomes parentheses. And my T2 is going to go on the outside here because I factored it out. So T2 is factored out because I took a T2 out of there and a T2 out of there. The stuff inside the parentheses is just a number, and so I can solve for it. And I'm going to take a pause here while I calculate this. And I highly recommend you do the same. All right, so inside the parentheses, uh, what we have here is T2. This number here just becomes, if you're in degree mode, make sure you're in degree mode if you're trying this at home, 0 0.6328. 6328. And it's got some other terms on it. I'm going to add the 325 to the other side. And so now all I have to do to solve for T2 is to divide that number over, so 325 divided by 0.6328, and that gives us a force of 500 and approximately 14 newtons, and so we have found out what the tension in T2 is, done and done. Now that I know the, fun the, the force in T2, now what I can do is I can take this number and plug it in right here. And I can figure out what the force in T1 is just by taking that number. Now we'll multiply by the cosine of 10. And we will divide by the cosine of 25. And T1 then is equal to 558-ish newtons. And we have solved for all of our tensions. I'd probably rewrite this down here. T1 equals 558. T2 equals 514. And there's our final answer to that particular problem. All of these are going to be in the format of you do have to write out both equations, x and y. You'll take one of the equations, solve for one variable, just like we did here, solve for one of the variables, and you'll end up solving for that, plugging it back in. That's the essence of tension problems. If you have any questions, you can ask me in class. Thank you for your attention.